Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we'll look at the basics of flash animation. Major topics we'll cover are keyframes, movie clip symbols, and motion tweens. The software I'm using in this video is Adobe Flash Creative Suite version 6 on a Mac. So before we get into flash, um, animation can be really complex the first time you try it. So I've broken the process down into four basic steps. Those steps are create a vector shape, convert it to a symbol, apply a motion tween, and then apply changes. If you can remember those four basic steps, you can do 99.9% .9 of all flash animation. So let's get into this. Here's a empty flash project I've created. I'm going to zoom in to 200% so I can see a little bit better. So my goal is to just do a simple animation on the stage. So my four steps were one, create a vector shape. So that's what I need to start with. So I'm going to use the shape tool and I'm just going to draw a simple square in the upper left corner. There we go. So now I have a vector shape that I can animate. So that's step one. Step two, convert it to a symbol. So in order to convert my shape to a symbol, I need to select it. So I'm going to double click to select both the stroke and fill. Then I'll right click where there's an option to convert to symbol. So I'll click that. In this dialog box, I need to set a few properties. First, I need to name my symbol. So just like in the file project management video, short descriptive name. So just red square will work just fine. Um, the type I'm going to use for animations are movie clip symbols. You can also use graphic symbols, but for this class we're going to keep it simple and just use movie clip symbols. Um, we don't need to worry about the registration point right now. We don't need to worry about what folder it goes into. It's going to go into our library root folder by default, and that's just fine. The advanced features we're going to ignore completely because that's way beyond the scope of this class. So to convert my vector shape into a symbol, I just need to give it a name, make sure it's a movie clip type, and hit OK. Right. So you probably can't see much difference here, but this shape is now in a blue bounding box. You'll notice if I click on it, I'm no longer selecting the stroke or the fill, I'm selecting a symbol. So a symbol is kind of like a package or a container for my vector shape. Um, it's kind of like an invisible box. If I want to see what's inside of that box, I can double click it and open it up. So just like the drawing objects from the shape tool video. Up here at the top I have scene one. This is in my location bar. If I double click my symbol, you notice now I'm inside my red square symbol and here I have a fill and a stroke that I can work with. Right? So if I want to make changes to my vector shape inside the symbol I just need to double click it to open it up. If I go back to scene one you notice I have that blue bounding box again. My invisible symbol container is now holding that shape and I can no longer edit it. So just be aware of that. One of the most common mistakes students new to flash and flash animation, especially working with symbols, do is they double click it. You're so used to double clicking to select the stroke and the fill. If you double click a symbol, just remember you're going to open it up by accident. So always double check your location up here. Before you do animation, make sure you're in scene one. All right. So, step one, create a vector shape. Step two, convert it to a symbol. So both of those steps are done. Step three, apply a motion tween. So motion tweens are applied down here in the timeline. Um, you'll notice our timeline starts with what's called a keyframe. And it's different than any of these other frames because it has a little dot down here at the bottom. That's how we know it's a keyframe. I'm going to right click on that keyframe and my first option is to create a motion tween. So if I click on that, we've now applied a motion tween to our timeline. Now by default, we have a 24 frame rate movie. That's just the flash defaults. So it gives us 24 frames of animation. We can increase or decrease that by putting our cursor at the end of the motion tween and just dragging it out or compressing it. I'm going to stretch mine out to 100 frames so I have a nice long animation to work with. Now you'll notice in my timeline I still have my keyframe at the beginning. There are no other keyframes in the timeline. Right? This is what's called the playhead, this red line, and it shows me visually what the stage looks like on every single frame. So as I'm moving back and forth you'll notice there's no changes on the stage. <clears throat> it's exactly the same on every single frame, and that's because this keyframe defines the position 
of my symbol and then all the consecutive frames um, just echo what's in that keyframe. So what I need to do now is step number four, apply a change. Now what's tricky is you need to apply the change somewhere in your timeline. So I want to change from the first keyframe to the very last frame in my timeline. So I'm going to move my playhead all the way to the end of my timeline. So it's on the very last frame and I'm going to grab what's on the stage and move it to the far right corner. And you'll notice when I do that, a line appears. This is the motion path of my object. And if I take my playhead and move it back and forth now, you can see how the object is moving along that path. Okay. Each dot on that path is a different frame indicating the position of the object. You can also notice here in my timeline, I now have a keyframe on the very last frame because I've made a change here. So the way the motion tween works is I define a starting keyframe, I define my position on the end keyframe, and then Flash does all of the in-between frames, or it tweens the animation. All right, so that's where we get the word tweening from. It's the in-between frames the flash is actually doing all the work for us and this makes animation very very quick and easy to do so now that I've set up my animation let's see what it looks like I can test my movie by going to control test movie and then hitting test um, I have to test movies quite frequently and you probably will too when you're working on projects so it's good to know the hotkeys on a Mac it's command return on a PC I believe it's control return but I don't have a PC in front of me so just check your hotkeys in this menu if you're working on a PC at home so I'm just gonna hold down command and press return and it'll open up a test window and I can actually see my animation taking place so you'll notice it's a hundred frames at a rate of 24 frames per second it should take approximately four seconds for this animation to play through from beginning to end so 1 1000 2 1000 3 1000 4 1000 and it starts over one of the most common questions is how do I speed up or slow down an animation well it's all based on the timeline remember 24 frames represents one second so if we move this distance in four seconds it travels at one speed if we change this to say 50 frames it's traveling the same distance in half the amount of time so it has to speed up so if I test this you'll notice my object is moving much much faster okay if I close this and I increase the number of frames so instead of a hundred we go to hundred and fifty we're now to up to almost six seconds so it's taking even longer to travel the same distance so it's gonna go much slower than the original movie so this is how you can control the speed of your animations and it will take some time to get used to the timing of animations and how many frames it's gonna take to make things look realistic in its movement in its speed on the stage um, and that's just something that comes with practice and patience so that's the basics of animating in Flash. Remember, it's four steps. One, create a vector shape. Two, convert it to a symbol. Three, apply a motion tween. And four, apply a change. Hope you learned something. See you in the next video.